stuck at home, let's do science. Now scientists, if you have been following our stuck at home science activities, today you might have an opportunity to make something that looks a little something like this. And you can change how you make that and you'll have an opportunity to really test it. Now, our stuck at home science activities do have their own theme and you'll see that theme kind of follow along for the week. And there is one thing that I want to dive into a little bit more because it actually affects a lot of the things around us all the time. We probably all have a lot of experience with it, but we don't always think about that it's there. Now this thing is all around you right now, just like it's all around me, but it gets a little difficult to remember that it's there because we can't see it. And a lot of the time, we forget that we are moving through it. Now I can show you what this is if you just take a look in there. Yeah, I know, and through the screen, this is really, really difficult. But the thing that I am talking about is air. So scientists, welcome to our air stream. And like I said earlier, we are live. So if we hiccup a little bit, thanks so much for your patience with us. Now, as we talk about air, we like to think of it as a thing. Now in science, a thing is considered matter. And matter has a weight and it takes up space. So there's this really weird thing all around us right now. It has a weight and it takes up space. So go ahead, take your hands and move around and really try to feel that air all around you. And you can feel it moving over your skin as you move around, but how is it taking up space? Now, one of the things that I will challenge you to do after this is to try and find all the things in your home where air is taking up space. Now, I can try and show you using this. So here I have a bag, and I am going to try and trap some air inside of this bag so I can show that air really does take up space. So I know. How did we do that? All we did was push some of the air that's already in this room into the bag. And if I squeeze it, I can feel it in there. But when I try to hold on to the air around me, I can't feel it in the same way. As you get dropped off at school, on the bus, on a bicycle, in a car, the tires have air inside of them. So now we know that air does take up space. The next one is a little harder. It takes some imagination, and if I had all the right tools, I would be able to do this as best as I can. So air, having a weight. If you move your hands right now, it doesn't feel like it has a weight at all. But think about what's holding you down to the planet. If you do a little jump, what brings you right back down? And that is gravity. Now we have so much air on our planet and we can think of it as layers and layers and layers of air and all of these layers are being held down by gravity. All of that on top of each other creates that weight. Now we are born into that weight so we're used to it. But think about astronauts that have to go up into space or as we are going deeper into the ocean that weight changes because we are changing where in those layers we really, really are. Okay. So if you try to imagine it, take your hand and make the biggest okay sign you can with your fingers. That's usually about a square inch. And for every space that big, you have a little less than 15 pounds of air pushing down on you. Now I'm not gonna sit here and do all of that math, but you can imagine how much pressure you're actually born into. So air, on its own, each tiny little molecule doesn't weigh very much, but when we accumulate all of that together, it does have a weight. Now one thing when we're at the Science Center I love to show is this bottle. We have water on the bottom, and you can take a guess at what we have up top. Okay. When I turn this over, what do we see happening? So we have to take into account all of our two substances, which one is heavier? The water. So gravity is pulling down on that. 
But what was taking up space down here, or the air that was taking up space, has now moved over to the other side. And that's because you can't have two things in the same place at the same time. So when you are matter, you can't take up the same space that another piece of matter is already taken up. So if I wanted to take somebody else's spot, I would have to physically move them out of the way. And it's that exact thing that lets us do things with air. Now, earlier, you saw me knock over some cups. And I used this really cool thing. Now, if I show you, it kind of looks like a trash can. And we know on the inside, you'll see some plastic. And what I can do is pull back on it. And when I let go, it pushes a pocket of air forward, giving me the ability to move things without touching them. And we actually use that ability of air moving all the time. We can use it when we want to experiment on small things like rockets. I love pushing rockets forward using air. Now, one of the really cool things about all of you being at home is that you can get really creative with those different things that you have. As you follow our activities, we have supplies that we think you could use, but that doesn't mean that you can't use something different. So if you wanted to make something like this air zooka that pushes air forward, you could use whatever materials are available to you. Now, the reason I wanted to touch on air, right now the Science Center is closed to everyone, but when we reopen, I would encourage you to come and visit and check out all the craft that we have that uses air to be able to function and move. Behind me, we have some of those models, and air and aircraft have been going hand in hand for a really long time. Scientists have been changing and modifying aircraft to be able to adjust to that force that air creates when it pushes back on it. Now, scientists, that's all that I have for today. I hope you're all feeling a little less stuck at home. Thanks for stopping by.